So I'm sure all of you have seen the J.K. Dobbins news of him saying he is sitting out mandatory minicamp because of not getting a new contract extension. I think it's a horrible idea for him. Uh, if you break down the, the numbers, they're not great. If you look at them, it's, especially the last two years, it's not warrants of a, a contract extension. So if we kind of quickly go through his history, his short history in the NFL, in 2020, his rookie year, he did have a phenomenal year, I think, for a rookie for a rookie running back. Remember, he was a former he's a former second round pick. So he was, of course, one of the better backs in 2020 coming out of Ohio State. He had 134 carries for 805 yards, nine touchdowns, pairing that also with 18 receptions for 120 yards. Overall, I think a great year for a rookie running back. He had close to a thousand total yards uh, altogether and nine touchdowns. He did that in 15 games. I'm not going to hold the one game he missed against them because I think that might have been for the playoffs. I think, I, and I kind of do that for anybody in general for quarterbacks or whatever. If you miss one game, I don't think that's a huge, you know, red flag for that. Teams do, you know, players do miss that because of reasons outside of injury. But overall, he overall he did play the whole season. But that's where it really ends for him in his valid argument of getting a contract extension. 2021, he missed the entire season because of a torn ACL. That was with all of the. The players, sadly, throughout the Baltimore team that just was just getting hurt all together before the season started. I think that was uh, Peters, Gus Edwards, and I think another running back to tore the ACLs that were out for the whole entire season. But he missed the entire year of that. So missed all 17 games for that year. And in 2022, missed the, or played less than half of the season, only playing eight games. And with that, he had 92, 92 carries for 520 yards, two touchdowns. Pairing up with seven receptions, 42 yards, one touchdown. This resume, this short resume, does not warrant a contract extension. I understand why he's doing this because just the running backs in general are getting viewed as disrespected because of just people easily saying it's an easier p- position to replace. You can get a uh, running back just as good for a much cheaper deal, and you can kind of cycle through that over and over and over again. The problem that hurts J.K. Dobbins, besides you know, the injury the injury concern, which is you could arguably say is the most important reason, he is not one of the top backs in the NFL. I think players like uh, Dalvin Cook, well, he's a free agent right now, but Dalvin Cook, Saquon Barkley, if you're viewing a you know, one-for-one for scenario case, Saquon Barkley, if you want to uh, view that, he has more leverage because he is one of the best running backs in the NFL. To me, I think he was the sole reason on offense the reason why they made the playoffs. I don't think it's it's more so uh, Daniel Jones. It was Saquon Barkley. And I think I do. I agree with him sitting out and trying to get his money because he's earned that. He bounced back last year off of two you know, injury riddled seasons. And he showed you how dominant he was, how dominant of a running back he is that people will expect him to be coming out in 2018, being this former second overall pick. He is warranted with that or warranted to sit out with that. J.K. Dobbins is nowhere close to Saquon Barkley's level or viewed as a top running back in the NFL. They have done just fine without him missing that time. Now, of course, you know, missing your top running back, does that hurt any top player at a position? Does that hurt you? Absolutely. But for running backs, they were able to get by signing players or having backups play. They were good enough to make it by. And especially with Greg Rowan no longer being there and the offense shifting more towards a passing scheme, it, this definitely hurts J.K. Dobbins in that sense. Uh, I think it's a horrible decision, no doubt, to sit out and ask, demand something when you haven't been available. And going back to the most important reason, just being not available for the team, if we add up the, the total games that he can play, the maximum he can play in these three years, he's had a, a chance to play the max 50 games in the three years. He's only played 23 out of 50 games. He's missed more games due to injury than playing in the NFL or playing a game in the NFL of course, if you do the math, that's 27 games missed, 23 games started. That's not good enough. That is not warranted of a contract extension. And also, too, we don't know what the money he's asking for. I don't know if it's a ridiculous amount or it's a fair amount. But regardless, it's the you know combining all together, not being available, having the injury problems, and also just the market in general for running backs. And on top of that, to pair up where the offensive is kind of heading towards a more passing-minded uh, team. Of course, pairing up with Zay Flowers and Odell Beckham, this this hurts you. And even on top of all of that, they didn't really skip a beat without you there. Once again, they were it definitely hurt them not having you there. But they did that. But it was enough for the players to have Freeman, Murray, so forth, uh, Gus Edwards. 
they were good enough without you to get by. And that's the biggest problem for, for J.K. Dobbins right now is I think he is overplaying his hand in this. I, I agree with running backs trying to get their money because I think I do agree in general that running backs are getting disrespected as just easily disposed of and you can just easily replace them. But with, the, with this history that he has, especially with the injury problem, he cannot do this. I think for the smart the smart for, thing for him to do is to, to go into the season, play it out. Hopefully you can, you know, knock on wood. I hope you can stay healthy just like any player. And he can go and ball out like he did in 2020. Then I think you have a much better chance of getting a contract extension because it can it shows a team that you're able to stay healthy and bounce back to what they thought you were in your rookie season. But without that, this you know, a promising season this year, and if you're sitting out, the only thing they can go off of is just the previous season, specifically the previous two. And with you only playing eight games and not playing not playing the best stats and not being the most important piece on the team, there's a good chance they might just let, let you go, try and trade you, or so forth. Or worst case scenario, you you play a season and you don't get a contract extension, which is probably what's gonna happen too if you still stick with the team and they don't try and move off of you this this off season or before the season starts, you'll probably just play out the final season, whatever how well you do, and they will still let you go. This is the problem I have with J.K. Dobbins. He just doesn't have leverage. He's not a Saquon Barkley type of running back, a high caliber running back. He doesn't have the leverage or resume to back up a or warrant a contract extension. He is easily replaceable. As sad as it sounds, as maybe harsh as that sounds, yes, in this case, he is easily replaceable because they have shown you, the team has shown you that they can play, they can still succeed without him. But let me know your thoughts down below on the J.K. Dobbins situation. If you do believe he will get a contract extension or you think they will move off of him either before the season starts or after the season. Let me know your thoughts down below with that. But with that being said, thank you for watching. I'll see you next one.